your life is changing day by day. What's to smile about, eh? Alright, what's been laying on my heart lately is that we need to go back and check our foundation. What are we building our spiritual life on? Because you must remember, God put us here on earth to reflect His glory so that we could be God in a physical realm, although He's in the spiritual. Right? So God was expanding His territory to put human beings on earth who would look just like Him. And then a fallen angel came along and you know the story. So now you're like an engine. <coughs> you are a spirit who has a soul and lives in the body. Right? So you died spiritually. Now you're running on two cylinders out of three. Does that make sense? So your capacity of running without the spirit is at 66% if you're running at capacity in these two dimensions, in these two areas of your life. We all know that the mechanic, the creator, God, is the one who gives you insight on how the engine should run and what you need to do to tweak it and get it to run at optimum mm. capacity. So now if the mechanic has been cut off, you've been using your two-dimensional, your two-cylinder engine, <coughs> and it's wearing out, isn't it? So you're not running at 66% capacity anymore. Some are running at 10, some are running at 15. Until you get reconnected with your mechanic and understand how the engine should run, your engine's not going to change, it's going to wear out. It's going to get worse and worse. Does that make sense? So God is telling me that this word, you probably all heard all these scriptures before, but if you think you know the scriptures, you don't know them well enough. So the name if I want to give it a name of my teaching, it's more of a teaching this morning, it's the foundation or reset and renew. If you are new to the body of Christ, then this is your foundation. This is your, your, your rock that you need to put. If you're going to build a building, you have to have a good foundation. Right? Because I guarantee you, if there is a flaw in your foundation, the higher you go, those cracks will start getting bigger and bigger and your whole building will fall. So you need to just go and recheck because we tend to get caught up in life and life keeps us busy and things happen. And we, our perceptions change. We grow. Our mindsets change. So you have to keep going back just to check your foundation. That it is solid. Because if there is a crack, you can put stuff in. There is new innovations of liquid cement must be into those cracks to strengthen it so that you can continue to build your spiritual life. Because I can guarantee you guys right now, if you do not have a good spiritual life, you will not have a good life in the natural. It's not possible. It is not possible. Because happiness is not found in things. Or in things. Fulfillment Joy, peace, fruits of the Spirit are only found in God, and God is not on earth. So if you are looking at things on earth, you cannot find fulfillment because you are a spiritual being. You're a spirit that has a soul and lives in a body. Does that make sense? Alright, so what we're going to look at this morning, <coughs> funny enough, I chose this music video this morning because we hadn't heard it in a long time, and I know that the old old songs is like, excellent worship. And the very scripture that I've got to start with is Jeremiah 29, 13, which you've shown me. Coincidental? No. <laughs> Alright, so I'm just going to read it. You don't have to go there. You can turn to Joshua 1 verse, Joshua 1. In Jeremiah 29, 13, it says, search with your whole heart and you will find it. Search wholeheartedly and you will find it. What is wholeheartedly? With your whole heart. And you will find it. Isn't it? It's self-explanatory. So what have you got to do? Search with your whole heart. Search with your whole heart. Do you want to find God? Because if you don't find God, you're not going to find your purpose for being created. You're going to get lost in worldly stuff. 
and have no spiritual treasure. So what is he saying? He's saying that you must search for them. Why? Because you're not going to find out who you are and why you were created unless you find God. Nobody else is going to tell you. The devil's going to tell you a lie. So what you're going to do is get lost in your talents. You're going to use your talents to impress the world, to earn a living, and you're just going to waste your time on earth and not say anything spiritually because you're not connected to God. So in eternity, you're bankrupt. You need to connect to God. That is... So he said you must search for it. Alright, so what? What now? How? How? Colossians 3.2 says, set your mind on things about. Set your mind on things about. Alright, so stop looking for your solution here. Start looking upward. Alright? You've got to do these things. He said, if you search with your whole heart, now you've actually got to make a choice. Am I going to search for God with my whole heart? Am I really going to look for it? Okay? Then I'm going to set my mind on things about it. I'm going to start looking in the right place. Right? These are our basic, basic steps for any new believer. But it's also a recheck or a reset. You know how you reset your computer every now and again? It picks up a whole lot of little loogies. <laughs> You've got to do that in your spiritual life. Go and recheck yourself because the heart of man is deceitful. And it does get caught up in all kinds of things. Just go back to the basics. Remember I preached on Friday night on the basics? Mm. We can give you the basic doctrines here. But you have to have a relationship with God to get deeper. We can just give you the basics here. And if you can't even do the basics, you're never going to get deeper. It's up to you. Because God is not marked. What a man sows, that he will reap. Whatever you sow to find God, he will reciprocate and meet you. With that, he's not marked. He is faithful and true. Amen. So where does the problem come? With me. I'm only going to have a relationship that is so deep with God if I press in that deep. That's it. Because love's not going to force himself on me. And I'll explain to you the difference between gifts and blessings in Friday night. So that we don't get confused and just sit back on our spiritual lazy boy expecting God to do everything and to bless us. So you guys understand that a bit better. Alright, Joshua 1 verse 6. This is a picture of you being born again and going into a new promised land. You've never been on this route before, it's new to you. Okay, like Joshua is going in the physical, you're going in in the spiritual. It says that be strong and of good courage to this people you will divide as an inheritance the land which I swore to their fathers to give them. Only be strong and very courageous that you may observe to do according to all the law which Moses my servant commanded you. Do not turn from it to the right nor to the left that you may prosper wherever you go. This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate in it day and night, that you may observe to do according to all that it is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous, and you will have good success. Mm -hmm. Have I not commanded you be strong and of good courage? Do not be afraid, nor be dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. <coughs> These are the words of God directly to the leader of Israel going to a new land. Right. Is God a personal God? Mm -hmm. Yes, He is. Each one works out their own salvation with fear and trembling. So He's talking to you personally. Going into the new land, just received the Holy Spirit. Now you are starting to take territory. Right? Does that make sense? Are you guys with me? Am I talking to mm -hmm. Alright, so He says there, number one, be strong and of good courage. What does that mean? Who is strong? Except the man who knows the word, who knows the word of the Lord. Isn't that his strength? The living word, Jesus Christ. Isn't that your strength in life? Well, it's supposed to be. It hasn't been this far, maybe. 
Because it's the truth. And the truth will set you free. Right? If I know that I know 2 and 2 is 4, you're not going to come convince me that 2 and 2 is 5. Am I right? Because I know that it's 4. I won't even entertain your argument. Because I know what the truth is. Not so. So if I do not know the Word of God, how do I battle the, the life? How do I battle my enemy? How can I stand if I don't know what's right and wrong? How can I do right? You see what I'm saying? So how much time do you spend in the Word? This is your basic, 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 basic foundation. So now you've been walking with God for 10 years, or whatever the case might be. Are you still getting into the Word? Are your seasons still ascertaining how much time you spend in the Word? Have you got a minimum period of time that you dedicate to the Word of God? Which will increase as the season might fluctuate? These are things, choices that you've got to make. If you're going to set your eyes on things about it. <clears throat> if you're going to seek with your whole heart. And it's not always easy because the flesh doesn't always feel like doing it or you're busy or when pity come and they say some girlfriend spill or whatever the case might be. There's always something, isn't it? But how desperate are you to know your purpose and become whole? Because I guarantee you when you know your purpose and you are doing it, you are fulfilled. Yes, storms will come. But you're able to stand strong. You're able to stand on the word. Your foundation has no cracks. Not an amen, not a peep, nothing. Amen. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I'm the least my feet are cool. <laughs> <laughs> All right. The second one he says is, be strong and of good courage. What is good courage? Being strong is knowing the word. Good courage is doing the word. Isn't it? It takes a courageous man to stand against the storm and say, no, I'm not going to do that, guys. Sorry, you guys can carry on. That's a courageous man. Just stand and watch. Who knows what's right and will not compromise. So be strong, be courageous. Right? The third thing he says there is meditate on the word. Or what's the next one? Yeah. Meditate on the word day and night. Whenever you get a chance. I, I often tell my counselors, guys, when you do your Bible study in the morning, the verse that jumps out at you, write it on a piece of paper, put it in your pocket. When you're on your workstations, instead of talking nonsense or thinking nonsense, take the verse out and meditate on it. Meditate on it whenever you get a chance, in the day or in the night, whenever you get the gap. Keep your mind, set it on things above. Because these things are passing away. God said, if you seek first the kingdom, He will supply all of your needs, right? All these things will be added unto you, depending on what translation you read. Right? So He's saying, the world teaches you, do all this, get your money, get your holiday house by the sea, your ride on lawnmower to freak your neighbor out, or whatever the case might be, and set yourself up in the physical, and then later on, now you've had a, a, a lucky job, now you can see from God. Isn't it? Anyone relate? Amen. God says the exact opposite. You must remember, Antichrist is the exact opposite to Christ. Eh? God says the exact opposite. He says, set your mind on things above, and these things here I'll give to you. Those are minors. They mean nothing. They're passing away. I need to bring you up, back to where you were before Satan <coughs> stole from you. I need to restore you through Jesus Christ back to a whole human being that's fired. Your engine's going to fire on the edge, 100% on all three cylinders. Mm. So why are we resisting? Because it takes putting the flesh down, isn't it? Mm. It takes to go and sit and read the Bible when you could be nattering to Keisha in the lava about lipstick and boys or whatever I was talking about. It's much easier, isn't it? 
Isn't it the hangover a lot easier to watch Hollywood movie than to watch a, a sermon? Is that what you mean? <laughs> Have you noticed that? Mm. Because it's escapism, isn't it? That when you watch a sermon, it actually starts convicting you that you have to do something. And the flesh wants to be in a comfort zone. It doesn't want to actually do anything. It just wants to park off an idol. So you actually have to take your flesh and twirl, as they say in Afrikaans. And twirl, man. You have to overcome that about it. And you have to discipline yourself. Because where your treasure is, where your heart will lie. And that doesn't just come like that. Oh Lord, please bless me with a hunger for you. Great. Start pressing in and God will bless you. It's a partnership. God doesn't want to clone. He could make clones any time. He wants you. He wants you to love him back. And how do you love a person? See it by your fruits. Isn't it? It's a choice you make. Yeah? Make sense? Okay, and the next thing he says, this book of the law shall not depart from your mouth. In other words, you'll speak it over your life. You'll start speaking the truth over your life because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So start reading your word aloud. Start praying aloud, not in your head. Have you noticed when you pray in your head that you land up over there? Eh? Right? That's like, woo -woo -woo -woo. that's when you start the repetitious prayers. Imagine that. Imagine Kerry going to her dad and saying the same thing to you every day. She does. Give me your credit card. <laughs> Alright, so you start speaking the word and not what you have been taught or believe. So that it becomes truth for you. That you can stop walking in truth. Okay. He says, and then you start doing it doing it. So there's four things there in those couple of chapters that he's telling Joshua, do these things and you won't go wrong. Do you want success in life? And then you will make your way prosperous. In other words, I will come through for you because I'm a faithful God. I will bless you as a reward for what you have done. That means that you can buy me so, however much you're going to give is how much you're going to receive. So, you want to be a closet Christian for the rest of your life? You're going to get frustrated. And God will put anger in your heart because there's got to be more than where you're at. There's got to be more than where you're at. I don't want to stay nice. There is sort of a bit of an energy. You take a fish out of the water, it's froths, it stings. Mm. Once you start stagnating, if you do not swim around, that fish cannot breathe. It cannot get the oxygen over its gills. It's going to die. to just fall. It's going to die. And we all know from dragging that you don't get any better or mm. Right? So you've got to change something in your life if you want a change in your life. Mm. You! Not your mom, not your dad, you. It's your life. You are going to give an account for every thought, every word, and every action. Or be judged on every thought, word, and action. Because that's you. And that's all that God expects you to control. Nobody else. Nobody else. God did not put man in charge of man. Man in charge of man. Man in charge of man. Ephesians 5.18 Amen when you're there. Amen. Mm -hmm. It says there, I'm reading from... 18 to 21. Do not be drunk with wine in which is dissipation. Dissipation means overindulgence in sensual pleasures. <coughs> the dictionary version or wildness of decadence. Okay, dissipation. 
Do not be drunk with wine in which is dissipation, but be filled with the Spirit, capital S. Speaking to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord, giving thanks always for all things to God the Father, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, and submitting to one another in the fear of God. Okay, so there's a whole bunch of things there. So be led by the Spirit. How are you going to get the Holy Spirit? How are you going to, how are you, are you led by the Spirit? Through the Word, isn't it? Nine times out of ten. God will speak to you through the Spirit, through the Word. So again, if you're not getting into the Word, how much are you being led by the Spirit? Because He says the sons and daughters of God are those who are spiritually who are led by the Spirit of God. These are the sons and daughters. Nobody else, a lot of people are saying, I'm a Christian. Go to church for 45 minutes on a Sunday. But by your fruits, by their fruit, for the rest of the week, you will know them. Isn't it? And sometimes they're so in disguise that you, it's sort of hard to see. Because they don't swear and they don't drink and they don't smoke. But they are not called out for God and being spirit led. They are going to come before the Lord and say, We've got that demon here now. You're going to say, Get away from the army here. Mm -hmm. If you do not have a personal relationship with God, you are fooling yourself with your question. Mm -hmm. You know? I'm getting a bit heavy here this morning. <laughs> but that's the truth of the matter. Mm -hmm. That's the truth of the matter. If you do not have a relationship with God and are being led by His Holy Spirit, you are not a Christian. You can call yourself one. You can act like one most of the time. Because if you have no connection with God, you do not know what His purpose is for you. So you can do all the good works you want in the world. That's not treasure in heaven. You can be a good person, but you're not a God person. I can bake cook sisters all week for the Zohar church. That does not get me in jail. The commission is to love your neighbor as yourself. And you can only do that if you're spirit led. You can only love, I can't love without God's love in me. It's not possible. I can have a counterfeit for a little bit and wear a mask, maybe. But it's not possible. You need God's Spirit in you, making your spirit alive to the truth. And strengthening you and encouraging you. And empowering you to walk the path that He has predestined for you. It says in Ephesians, I think it's 3, that you make straight paths for me. You order my every step. You can't do that unless you get into the presence of God to find out what He wants you to do. Jesus got up early in the morning, went up on a mountain by Himself. What do you think He did there? Isolated Himself. <laughs> he went to talk to the Father and said, Lord, lead me. Lead me in spirit and in truth here today. What do you want me to do? Because I only do what I see of my Father in Heaven, not myself. You know what I'm saying? Now how can you do those things if you don't get into the presence of God? So, set your mind on things above. How do you set your mind? There's a tip there. It says speaking to one another, one another spiritual songs and so on. Singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. So you are setting your heart before God now, aren't you? Eh? What's your heart? Your heart? Your heart is what drives everything. It gets filtered through your mind, it goes into your heart, and there's your belief system. So you're setting your belief system by singing songs. Spiritual songs and praising and worshipping God. How do we get into the presence of God? Guys, know this by now. Praise and voice. thanksgiving. So you are setting your heart in the presence of God. 
when you are praising and worshipping him in your heart, and you can do that all day long. You can do that all day long. In fact, in, I've found in my life, and that doesn't mean it's going to happen in your life, I wake up in the morning with a different song, usually. Sometimes with the same song, but a different song in my heart already. So immediately, my mind set up. <laughs> my heart's of God. Immediately. And when I'm in the presence of the Lord, and somebody comes and attacks me, do I get annoyed? When my mind's there, in the presence of God, who is good, who is love, do I take offense like that? Do I get angry like that? No. It was the peace of God that brought your heart and your mind. It's over me. I'm in His presence. You know what I'm saying? There's a protection in it. There's a protection in it. God doesn't say do these things because you've got a great big ego. <coughs> he says these things for your benefit. Because He loves you. That's one. Yes, it is a strafness in the beginning. But I tell you, if you continue your Bible study, it becomes a joy. It turns into joy as you start getting med meditating, you start getting revelation, you start getting, wow, I didn't see that about God. It like excites you. It empowers you to walk in strength with courage. You can't do it by yourself. And that is where your faith grows because you see God coming through for you. You're stepping out of your comfort zone. You're saying, okay, God, you said this. I'm going to believe it with a little bit of faith that I've got here ago. And you faithful and true. Wow, God came through for me. That's what he does, actually. He loved me. Little old me. I know he loves Uncle Derek. But what about me? You see what I'm saying? That's where your faith's going to grow. In taking God's hand and walking with him and seeing that he's faithful. Because he is faithful to the faithful, as we said on Friday night. St. Joshua 1 6, you set your soul. Mind, will, and emotions. On reading the word, meditating on the word, speaking the word, and doing the word. You're setting your soul, right? What we just said now, being spirit led, is setting your heart. Setting your heart on God. You draw in near to Him by setting your mind with praise and thanksgiving. Make sense? Mm -hmm. Are you alive? I wish the dawn is not in here. <laughs> Are you guys alive? You're dying. You're melting. <laughs> eh? Alright. Proverbs 16 verse 3. Same one we do Friday night. Funny how God sometimes repeats. He says, They commit your works to the Lord and your thoughts will be established. Eh? So, you've got to set your actions. How can you set your actions unless you have already set your soul? Which is, get into the Word. Speak the Word. You see, these are all foundational. They all go together. They all fit together. They're all pillars of your foundation. The very start that you start with no cracks, that your, your rock is solid. Mm. If you don't have these things, or you're missing one or two of them, you've got cracks. Alright. So, set your actions. If you commit your works to the Lord, and we said that we're going to do that with everything from in the morning until you go to bed at night. Whatever I do, I'm going to commit it to the Lord because now I'm setting my mind on the Lord, number one. I'm committing my works and my ways to God. If it's washing dishes, I'm going to do it the best of my ability. I'm not going to chuck them around. I'm not going to chip. I'm not going to hoy the tables around because I'm doing this for Jesus. And I'm going to prove myself to be a worthy servant. And God will lift the humble up. He will raise you up because He looks at the heart. It looks at the heart. If your heart is not right, your words are not going to be right. 
right? So commit even your punishment. You made a mistake. Get up, dust yourself off, commit the punishment to the Lord and do it to the best of your ability because God's looking at your heart. Yes, it's a consequence of your stupidity. But so what? You think God's love is now any less for you that for you because of that? Dedicated to him, man. He says you look little children in my eyes. Little kids. He has to talk in little kid language to us. But I will talk to little kid uh, language who's a little kid who's full of joy, running around and full of zest for life. More than I'll talk to a little kid sitting in the corner who doesn't want to speak to anybody and he's always grumpy and never appreciates anything. Isn't it? Because he's not allowing me to talk to him. God is not mocked, but a man sows that he will read. Does that make sense to you guys? Yeah. Alright, so. Your basement pillars that we've just had a look at today, and there are more. Oh, read the word, meditate on the word, speak the word, whether it's over your life or to other people to encourage you. Alright? Do the word. Praise, thanksgiving, and the last one is love your neighbor. Love your neighbor. We read it in, in um, Ephesians 5 18 to 21, it says, Submit to one another. Rather keep the peace, submit to one another, and hold each other in higher esteem than yourself, because God will lift you up. It's the same humility of committing your ways to the Lord, mm. committing your works to the Lord. All right. So you must set your mind to set your heart. And on, in doing that, you'll settle your actions. Does that make sense? You need to set your mind so in order to set your heart. And then you will settle your actions. Okay. Amen. Guys, get into it. Get proactive. Do something. God has done everything for you <laughs> to get off your back. God seeking you. Mm. You want to live life? Jesus came to live, came to die, so that you can have life to the full. Mm. I want full life. The thought cuts both ways. I'm talking to myself here. Well, God's talking to me here. I want a full life. So I'm going to change my way. I'm going to start getting into the Word. Meditating on the Word, speaking the Word, doing the Word, praising, giving thanks, committing my works to Him, and loving my name. Father, we thank You for Your Word here this morning. I pray that You'll be with us. I pray for travel mercy for our guests here today, Lord. Lord, I just pray that You have Your way in our hearts, that we will just quiet ourselves. So that we can hear what you have to say for a chance, Lord, because we've all got our opinions. We've all got our beliefs. We've all got our incorrect ways. Lord, if we're going to shine you, we need you. I pray that you give us courage and strength to seek your face in all areas of our life. And I thank you that in doing that, we are never used to it again. Holy Spirit, have your way in our hearts. Go before us. Make straight paths for us. <laughs> Protect us, my God. Yes. Protect us. Warm a head around us. And just show us a new facet of your love for us. Also, in Jesus' name, I thank you. Amen. 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 Amen.